हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम मीनल ढल फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ एंथ्रोपोलॉजी यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ दिल्ली टुडे विल स्टार्ट विद द मॉड्यूल जेनेटिक लैंडस्केप ऑफ इंडिया फ्रॉम द पेपर ह्यूमन पॉपुलेशन जेनेटिक्स नाउ वट वी विल लर्न इन दिस मॉड्यूल फर्स्ट वाई द इंडियन सब कॉन्टिनेंट इज कंसिडर्ड एज अ नेचुरल लेबोरेटरी फॉर जेनेटिस्ट सेकेंडली द जेनेटिक मार्कर्स मोस्टली यूज टू study the genetic diversity in india then populations have that have been mostly studied and the reason that makes them genetically interesting the outcomes of genetic diversity studies on population in india so to start with the indian subcontinent it is the home to immense diversity biological cultural demographic ethnic and linguistic nurtured by varied geographical attributes now these have been led to the stratification of population across the country into tribal and non tribal group linguistic group and religious groups among the primary ones attempts to study the resulting differentiation in population have lately focused on population genetic approaches to increase the accuracy of investigations these attempts have helped draw a genetic landscape of indian population painting a not complete but a clear picture reflecting the genetic structure of indian populations some of the numerous aspects studied have been included in the following sections but first of all the ethnic and linguistic elements have been summarized which form the backdrop of most of the genetic diversity studies in indian population now the indian subcontinent a natural genetic laboratory The genetic landscape of India is a result of the peopling of the subcontinent or by various waves of migration several indigenous groups and their interactions the geographic position of the indian subcontinent makes it a possible corridor to the early dispersal by modern humans which begin from africa about 100000 years ago but the exact date of the arrival and habitation of modern human in india is still disputed the traces of first modern human in eurasia were however observed to be around 30000 to 50000 bp that is before present the middle and upper paleolithic tools of around the same time were also found in india the social stratifications due to the caste system dialects spoken and religions followed have created divergent groups that are endogamous a large chunk of the population follows the hindu religion which divides the society into four castes which have further subdivisions about 8% of the population is constituted by tribal groups depending on language classification the indian populations are grouped into indo-european austroasiatic dravidian and tibeto-burman population while tribal populations fall into all the four groups non-tribal groups speaking indo-european or dravidian languages only most of the populations of india speak languages of the indo-european family which also has languages spoken by western eurasians in fact the introduction of caste system was the result of conquest by indo-european speaking invaders from central asia the formation of the social structures led to the introduction of rules controlling the pattern of mate exchange within and between the groups the limitation posed by these rules of matrimony led to the formation of endogamous population which in turn resulted in cultural and genetic differentiation another belief regarding the demographic 
of the different language speakers in that Dravidian speaking population were spread throughout the subcontinent prior to the arrival of Indo-European speakers. After the later invaded, they drove the Dravidians towards the southern part of the country and to this day, northern part of India has more speakers of Indo-European language family. An interesting aspect is also seen in the limited inhabitation of the Tibeto-Burman language speaking population to the northeastern part of the country. The speakers of Austroasiatic family belong to two separate divisions. Members who speak languages of the Mundari subdivision of the Austroasiatic family dwell the eastern and central parts of the country. The speakers of the Mon Khmer subdivision primarily inhabit the northeastern part of India. An important aspect of population stratification is seen in the presence of religious groups like Muslim, Christian, Buddhism, Jainism, etc., and the migrant population like Siddhis of African migrants, Parsis, and Iranis. Several theories have been proposed on the origin of the social hierarchies among Indian population. The first documented evidence of the caste system was found in the Rig Veda, that is, from 1700 to 1100 BC. It has four groups Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaishya, and Shudra, each assigned with a specific occupation in the society's function. Each group has subdivisions. The origin of the caste system was hypothesized to be the result of the Indo-Aryan invasions wherein the migrants replaced and pushed the indigenous Dravidian groups towards the southern part of the country. The indigenous groups were later recruited into the caste group the tribal believed to be the original inhabitants of India and so are important to understand the earliest settlement in the continent as well as the cultural transition that the population in India have undergone. Their relative geographic and cultural isolation in comparison to non-tribal groups makes them one of the connecting links with the past. All these factors, languages and ethnic affiliations, sometimes demarcated by geographical restrictions, has made India into a natural laboratory for genetists. Initial genetic studies, after having identified the above diversifications, attempted investigating the content of genetic differentiation by studying the genetic structure of Indian population. This pursue saw the evolution of classical to molecular markers. The deductions made from the empirical evidences have produced a genetic landscape of India that is becoming clearer with time. New conflicting scenarios have arisen, some questions are unanswered and lot many populations still unexplored. We contemplate upon a few lessons provided by the molecular markers now widely in use. Lessons from mitochondrial markers. The first one is mitochondrial DNA and human evolutionary genetics. The unique property of mitochondrial DNA which make it a suitable marker for studying human evolution and population's history are the first is multiple copies per cell, second is maternal inheritance, third is lack of recombination and fourth point is high mutation rate. Now the second type is studying mitochondrial DNA variation. Earlier studies were based on variation in mitochondrial restriction fragment length polymorphism called as RFLPs with advent of sequencing methods complete sequencing of the mitochondrial DNA PCR products for the first hypervariable region called as HVR1 of the control region of mitochondrial DNA was done. With the development of high throughput DNA sequencing technology, whole mitochondrial genome were sequenced as a part of population studies. The data obtained is analyzed using lineage based or population based approaches. Lineage based approaches 
study the population history by examining the diversity of haplogroups haplogroups are defined by a common set of mutations which tend to differ among regions population based approaches apply population genetic methods to data to answer the queries on human prehistory population origin and migrations among the most important finding from mitochondrial studies on human population histories have been those about the peopling of the new world settlement of the pacific invasions in new guinea and australia and the settlement of europe the only drawback of studying mitochondrial dna variation is that since it is a single locus reflecting only maternal history the variation could be because of chance effects or selection acting on it nevertheless mitochondrial dna markers have helped gain genetic insights on population histories many times supporting ethno historical accounts now when we talk about mitochondrial landscape of india the mitochondrial markers are localized in the maternally inherited mitochondrial dna and so are used to infer the dynamics of maternal lineages initial studies used mitochondrial rflps and subsequently more fine resolution of lineages were done by sequencing hyper variable regions 1 and 2 of the mitochondrial dna the mitochondrial perspective of india's role in the genetic history of modern human can be understood by examining the dispersal of the two major haplogroups that is m and n among different populations of india the mitochondrial dna diversity in india is second only to that observed in africa the distribution of mitochondrial dna haplotypes is uniform among different groups in india and the extent of genetic variation of mitochondrial dna lineages is restricted indicating a very small founding population of females macro haplogroups m r and u that are from central asian origin are observed in majority of the individual in different groups of india the u haplogroup has two deep rooted lineages of which u 2 i is at high frequency among tribal groups and may be indigenous to india many sub haplogroups of m n and r haplogroups are rampant and at low frequencies within the indian populations the presence of these three haplogroups supports the southern root theory and the u2 sub haplogroups entry was dated after origin of m n r endorsing the migratory history of modern humans through south asia now let's talk about lessons from y chromosomal markers y chromosomal dna and evolutionary genetics the y chromosome is carried only by the male individual and so in evolutionary studies is important for carrying the male specific markers the chromosome is gene pool having only 27 protein coding genes and included short interspread nuclear elements called as sine endogenous retrovirus and segmental duplication as other genetic elements the recombining portion of the y chromosome forms 95% of the chromosome this class of markers are located in the non recombining portion of y chromosome and so often called nry markers the nry markers provide clues on their origin divergence and movement of paternal lineages the existing y chromosomes have evolved from a single paternal ancestor it has been vested some unusual features in comparison to other evolutionary important markers like a high mutation rate higher sequence divergence between species and lower sequence diversity within species the low 
within species diversity is attributed to the low effective size of the chromosome which increases the effect of genetic drift on it the high genetic drift also accounts for the high between population diversity in human this makes it an important marker for studying geographical variations between human population studying the y chromosomal variation the main objective of y chromosome research has been to find and compare the diversity of y chromosome haplogroups in different populations the classes of variation studied area based substitution duplication or deletion insertion and tandem repeats like mini satellites and micro satellites the findings from y chromosome diversity studies have implications in evolutionary genetics genealogical investigations forensic work and medical research migratory history and admixture can be deduced for a population by studying the distribution of haplogroups y chromosome landscape of india most of the societies in india are patrilocal where social mobility of women due to marriage is a norm this reflected in y chromosomal evidence which showed lack of male mediated gene flow between groups the y chromosome markers comparison between caste and tribes show the uniqueness of these two groups the presence of some deep rooted y lineages in lower caste and tribes was inferred as a possible tribal origin of the lower caste evidences from y chromosome showed that groups inhabiting the northern part of india have close genetic affinities with those of west asia and central asia but the caste group in south india were found to be more similar to east european and then the asians the y haplogroups that is h l r2 and f are at high frequencies in indian groups both caste and tribes indicating the underlying genomic unity a study on y snps and strs on diverse group spread over south asia provided evidences that the genetic influx from central asia on the pre existing gene pool was low ruling out the recent gene flow from central asia y chromosome studies on the austro asiatic languages speaking groups who are believed to be the earliest settlers in the continent revealed th their paternal affinities with each other and with those in southeast asia studies on muslim population showed them to be genetically closer to the nearby non muslim group than to the other group which implied muslim expansion to the cultural transition when we talk about lessons from autosomal dna markers and uh, this autosomal dna and evolutionary genetics the autosomal dna markers have a more complex biparental mode of inheritance in comparison to mitochondrial dna and nry most of the genes in the human genome are located in the autosomes the autosomal regions are subjected to functional constraints as they contain the maximum number of protein coding genes the different genetic elements present in the autosomal genes that have been examined for evolutionary genetic studies are retro elements rflps snps and strs the autosomal markers have wide applicability in studies investigating human population structure and history many autosomal genes play important role in metabolism identification of variants in these genes thus has implications in studying the population wise prevalence of disease conditions for instance the delta 32 mutation in the ccr5 gene increases the resistance against hiv infection in individual population with higher prevalence of this mutation are less susceptibility to infection by hiv and when we talk about the autosomal dna studies in india 
yet some authors have used autosomal STRs to examine genetic affinities among Indian groups. But the autosomal chromosomes have genes that play important role in metabolism and so studying variation in these genes is important to draw the health landscape of India. The genetic variation in autosomal genes has been studied to achieve the various objectives like to find out the clusters with similar pattern of variation among different subgroups of population, to examine the extent of genetic differentiation between clusters and different loci, to assess the effect of ethnic, linguistic and geographic demarcations at individual loci, and to find out the haplotype diversity and linkage disequilibrium in these genes across population. The population stratification has left genomic imprints at times uniformly across the entire genome and sometimes localized at certain genes and genomic portions. The assessment of these variations has been useful in understanding the pronounced effect of genetic heterogeneity while studying complex diseases among populations in India. A close examination revealed large allele frequency differences between population at these loci reflecting strong founder effect preserved by strict endogamy. So, many population specific diseases have been reported where the culprit gene has also been identified like Madras motor neuron disease, pseudocolinosteresis deficiency, characteristic genic patterns like population specific haplotype have also been identified. Now we'll discuss some genetically interesting populations in India. One of the population is Andaman and Nicobar island population. Two groups of tribes inhabit these islands that is Little Andaman and Great Andaman groups which are linguistic subdivisions. Genetic revelations on these groups have helped getting clues on the dispersal and evolution of modern human after emerging out of Africa. Ancient DNA, mitochondrial DNA and Y chromosomal investigation showed affinities of these groups with Asian population. The two novel and unique mitochondrial DNA lineages are M31 and M32 with estimated age to be 65,000 years were discovered. Another study suggested genetic uniqueness and long-term association of these groups from population of South Asia. When we talk about population of northeastern state, the Tibeto-Burman speaking tribal groups inhabiting the state in the northeastern part of India are among the last tribal groups of immigrate into the subcontinent. The genetic evidences show that these populations entered from the northeastern corridor and settled here. The absence of YAP that is Y Elu polymorphism insertion element in Tibeto-Burman group as opposed to the other groups in the mainland supporters their genetic separations. Now phylogenetic analysis to revolve the affinities between the tribal populous Tibeto-Burman, Austroasiatic and Dravidian groups showed that the two later groups were more closely related with, than the Tibeto-Burman group and the Tibeto-Burman group, however, share the considerable genetic constitution with Austroasiatic groups differentiated only at the Y chromosome variants. Now, the genome-wide scanning showed their genetic proximity with Chinese population. One of the most interesting population, genetically interesting population in India is Siddhis. Siddhis are also known as Hapshis. They are migrant population from East Africa who were brought to India as slaves by the Portuguese between the 17th and mid 19th century. They mainly dwell the states of Gujarat, coastal Karnataka and Andhra Pradesh. 
genetic investigations by researchers in India have attempted to find their population history using different sets of markers. The Siddhis were found to have inherited the genetic heritage of Africans, Indians and Portuguese. The Y-chromosomal and mitochondrial DNA markers helped trace the ancestry to Bantu language speakers of sub-Saharan Africa. Admixture studies are used to find the extent and time of occurrence of genetic admixing among population that are known to have undergone genetic exchange. Admixture analysis of Siddhis showed admixture from neighboring group of South Asian nearly 200 years ago which is also the time when they were imported into the continent. The Indian Genome Variation Constitution, a brief in an attempt to find the genetic underpinning of the ethnic and linguistic diversity in geographically spread out population of India, six laboratories of the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research that is CSIR with financial support of Government of India slated an initiative and formed the Indian Genome Variation Constitution that is IGVC. The Indian Genome Variation Cons Consortium was in 2005 a joint initiative to address several questions related to the distribution of genetic variation and its association with clinical phenotypes and response to drug consumption in Indian population. The important question raised to be investigated by the IGVC are pertaining to the distribution of clinically important SNPs, SNPs among the population, the correlation of distribution of these SNPs with ethnic, linguistic and geographic affiliation, the identification of ancestry informative markers, the relationship with HapMap project population and the differentiation of disease susceptibility drug responsiveness and predisposition of infectious diseases among the population. A total of 55 populations were recruited to represent the ethnic, linguistic and geographic diversity of the Indian population. The subjects were screened for 405 SNPs spread across 75 genes and sequenced for a 5.2 MB long genomic segment of chromosome 22 covering 49 genes. Genes implicated in monogenic disease and complex diseases were included in the study. The genes in chromosome 22 studied have roles in susceptibility towards schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. The other genes have been implicated in cancer, aging, cardiovascular disease, neurological disorders, infection susceptibility and drug response. The result on the genetic structuring of Indian population obtained from the project are first is low population differentiation was indicated across most of the loci and it was high at a few. The extent of differentiation was higher among the tribal populations representing different linguistic families. Population were more differentiated due to ethnic affiliations than geographic or linguistic factors and this was attributed to the isolation of tribal in comparison to non-tribal groups. Second is the population of India group into five genetic clusters and on a global context genetic affinities of Indian population with other world population was non-uniform and complex. Lastly, it shared the haplotypes were found in genes implicated in the complex disease. Here in the slide you can see five genetic clusters underlying Indian population in the India map. The project had certain merits. The study by IGVC was more inclusive of the ethno-linguistic diversity and genomic coverage than the other studies. The spread of the sampling strategy 
added a feather to its cap the final and very important outcome of the study was the defining of population into five genetic clusters in a nutshell genetic landscape of india indicates a common and deep genetic heritage of the caste and tribal population the initial colonization of the subcontinent has been dated back to about 60000 years ago that coincides with the time of first wave of migration out of africa the higher genetic affinities of the upper caste population with the central asians geographically proximate populations are genetically similar genetic differentiation among tribal group is greater than that among caste groups and lastly austroasiatic speaking tribal groups might be the earliest inhabitants of india to summarize this module the indian subcontinent has a genetic reservoir created by the immense cultural demographic and linguistic variations with populations stratified into tribal and non tribal group speaking languages belonging to one of the four linguistic families the geographical location and biological diversity facilitated multiple waves of migration and subsequent gene flow into the subcontinent during different points of history thus the genetic landscape of india has been shaped up by the culturally linguistically biologically and ethnically diverse invaders along with the pre-existent indigenous groups now the mitochondrial diversity of india is defined by dispersal of two major haplogroups that is m and n and their numerous sub haplogroups among different populations of india at varying frequencies the y chromosomal evidence showed lack of male mediated gene flow between the groups supporting restricted marital pattern due to social stratification many population specific diseases reported have left genomic imprints population like the tribes of andaman and nicobar island and the northeast tribal groups are genetically divergent from the rest of the population groups in india the indian genome variation cons- consortia is an interorganizational initiative to understand the genetic structure in population of india thank you